April 2020, middle of COVID, we got our product. I click go on Facebook ads. In the first week, we were already doing five thousand dollars in sales, and from wow. there, it's it's uh, it's history. Wow. Okay. Well, there's a lot to unpack. That. Welcome everyone to the Fight Against Mediocrity podcast. Today's guest is Ryan Maya. I'm super excited for this. He owns a multiple seven-figure e-commerce brand called Beyond Braid. We'll get into that. Um, you can find him on YouTube. He used to work for Grant Cardone and raised $75 million uh, towards real estate deals. He likes cars, business, money, sales, and marketing. So the perfect podcast guest. Welcome, Ryan. Thank you for having me. Excited. Sick. And you're in you're in Florida, right? What part of Florida? Yep, Miami, Miami, Florida, born and raised here. Miami Beach to be exact. Okay, cool. Very cool. Um, so I'm really excited for this. I know. So just to give you guys some background, Ryan and I, we both went to Ryan Pineda's mastermind in Las Vegas a couple weekends ago and we're able to connect and and hit it off and was super impressed with what he's doing. So tell us about your story. How did you end up owning a seven-figure e-commerce company selling a fishing line? Yeah, so I kind of been entrepreneurial my whole life. So first started off with like washing cars for my dad in our driveway, getting 10 bucks, right? Giving him a foot massage, 10 bucks. Uh, then middle school, I used to sell candy. And you so tell we call those and you tell we call those chores, but yeah, I mean I'm chore they were paid chores, right? Paid chores. Um Sorry, no, Some it's candy. all good. It's all good. Then we I used to sell candy in middle school. So you go to Costco, buy a box for 15 bucks, so you get cool. 30 candies, you make a dollar. So I made like a couple hundred bucks doing that. And then high school, I started flipping iPhones on eBay. So I started a business called Cash for iPhones. I started an Instagram doing the follow, 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 unfollow, like to get people interested. How and old were you? I was, that I probably started when I was like 14, 15. Holy cow, dude. I think the first, I it was back when the iPhone 4 was out. Like that, that was the main phone that I was flipping. The 4, <laughs> the 4S. Dude, you buy those for like a hundred bucks. I used to buy them for a hundred and sell them on eBay for 250, 300, 400 bucks. And so like cool. people just like, they didn't know what to do with them. So there was a point where I was making good money. Like there were some phones I was making $300 profit on. Um, but then when like iCloud came out and iCloud lock, that kind of like froze and then financing the phones, like all of that kind of froze that business right when I was probably like 19, like my first year of college. So I made a few thousand bucks doing that, probably five, six, seven thousand bucks doing that. Total and or per month? Total, total. 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 Yeah. Total. So like I always had this little nest egg that I was building. Like I had like this little yeah. toy safe that I was always just stacking cash away. And then my little cousin, who's a year younger than me, is entrepreneurial as well. And he showed me this app called Shopify and what he was doing. And he was drop shipping. And like, I saw that there was one day he showed me his phone and it had like, he did $500 in sales that day. And I was like, that's crazy. Like, what, what is this? So he taught me about shop, uh, drop shipping. Uh, he gave me some course that he bought for like 400 bucks. And then basically the next few years in college, that's what I tried doing was just going hard on drop shipping. And for a few years, I tried it and just consistently failed because I was missing the one major key, which was marketing, Facebook ads. Like that's what I, I was trying to make the website perfect, the product perfect, everything else perfect, except the Facebook ads, which is the most important thing of, I think any business is the marketing uh, aspect and the ability to get customers to your website. Um, so I transitioned to that. Uh, tried 10 different stores and on like circling back to my original store, which was a fishing store, I started drop shipping fishing line and got really good at that because I figured out Facebook ads and I took a camera, recorded myself with the product and got that to work. So uh, I graduate college. I go to work for Grant Cardone. I'm still drop shipping. I end up selling the drop shipping business for 50 grand to some random guy. Uh, a couple months later, he uh, kind of took the business from being profitable to, Hey, I have no idea what I'm doing. I negotiated 51% back of that business. And then Perfect. a couple months later we started beyond break. Yeah. I, I just told him, I was like, Hey dude, I'm keeping the money. I can take back 51%. I'll get it profitable, sell it in a couple months. And he's like, all right, like, dude, I'm already out 50 grand. What? Like, why not? Oh my gosh. 
So he agrees to that. And then we start drop shipping again. And then he's like, Hey, like, why don't we try to grow this? He's a high, high net worth individual. He's a COO of a publicly traded media company. I have no idea why he's interested in uh, drop shipping stores, but he, he, whatever it is, what it is. And then we started beyond braid a couple months later, beyond braid, the concept evolved. And then we didn't really launch it and get the product in for another like six, seven months. April 2020, middle of COVID, we got our product. I click go on Facebook ads. In the first week, we were already doing $5,000 in sales. And from wow. there, it's it's uh, it's history. Wow. Okay. Well, there's a lot to unpack there. You made it all awesome. Mouthful. You, uh, you took a, a lot of information and made it made it really short. So let's unpack that. So um, why why fishing line? So I uh, have been fishing my whole life. So I live here on Miami Beach. Uh, my oldest brother, who's 40 years old, he's fished his whole life. My dad has fished since he was, my dad's almost 70. He's fished since he was a kid, right? So I've been fishing my whole life. And when I first um, took that drop shipping course to like pick a niche, a niche could be cats, uh, cat supplies, pet supplies. It could be makeup tools. It could be fishing, right? So the niche I picked was naturally something that I knew about. And um, I, I just kind of ran with it. But to just tack on a, a, a note to that, I told you I tried 12 different other stores. And those were in niches I really didn't know about. So I tried uh, beauty supplies, makeup tools, like college gear, uh, right? You can generally know about that stuff. But the reason all those stores failed was is it I didn't know the lingo of the customer as well as I do fishing. So I'm a fisherman. I know exactly what lingo and fishermen would like to see because I'm basically talking to myself. Mm -hmm. So full circle, the reason I think I was successful in fishing was because I'm just talking to myself. So it's a lot easier whenever I tell someone who wants to start an e-commerce or start some sort of online business, I always tell them, find something that you're already doing as a hobby or that you know about and try to piggyback off that. Cause it's going to be a lot easier for you to make content, do, uh, uh, make copy, do ads, uh, make product descriptions, et cetera, et cetera. Yeah. That makes sense. You can only BS your way through it so far and tell people are like, ah, yeah, this, this doesn't really resonate with me. Well, that's yeah, exactly. really interesting. Yeah. Like, um, so I'm, I'm working on, for example, I'm working on a skincare brand right now. That's more, right now branded towards women and i have no idea what i'm doing like i have so i can look at other people and do my best to copy what they're doing but i just i don't speak the lingo that well yet i'm sure eventually I'll, I'll get it but and so what do you do in that situation where you're starting something but you don't know the lingo you always look at the person you a person or brand you want to be like so for example this is a skincare brand uh there's someone in the same niche who ezra firestone he has a huge um, uh, skincare brand, makeup brand called Boom by Cindy Joseph. So I basically, I'm just looking what Ezra's doing, literally looking at his website, looking at his ad copy, and just, I don't want to say doing exactly what he's doing, but doing something very similar because it's already working. They do yeah. 30, 40, 50 million a year. So why not try it? Like, why would I try to reinvent the wheel when what they're doing is clearly working? It's modeling, right? It's funnel hacking. Yeah, modeling, modeling. Yeah. That's, that's the word. Not copying, we're modeling. Yeah, exactly. And uh, would you, well, before we go back, um, I think a lot of people, a lot of people, I think a lot of entrepreneurs, they try once, it doesn't work. And so they think, oh, it must not be for me or yeah. I'm not good at it. Or So what, what kept you going after 12, you know, I don't want to say failed, but 12 attempts and then that 13th is what you, you can call them failures. It is what it is, right? Failure, failure. I know, are I mean, you, you, I mean, they fed that you were, you failed, but you could call them learning experiences because exactly you know, that yeah. that's what I was alluding to, right? If you don't learn from the previous experience, then you just outright failed. Um, I, what kept me going? I, I would say just like the, the business model interested me so much. Like you can literally start a website for 20 bucks a month. You can put products on the website for free. You can start with Facebook ads at $5 a day. And like, if you get this thing to work, like it's a, it's a money printing machine. So that concept really interested me because it was, it, it just seemed like such a unique way to start a business with such a low barrier to entry, but so much upside. 
And if you get it right, there's unlimited upside, right? Depends on how much, how good and how good your ads can be and how much you can scale them. So, um, I, it just, it just lured me into like the, the whole concept of like, wow, like I can just press a few buttons a day and have this thing making sales every single day. And you wake up and you have sales in the morning, you go to sleep, you have sales at night. So I think the business model kind of attracted me, but just piggybacking on what we just said recently, I think you and I spoke about this at the event. I tried, uh, e-commerce coaching, right? I created one funnel. I created four or five ads. I pressed go and it broke even, right? I spent five grand and sold five courses for a thousand bucks, made five grand. So I broke even. And, and that, then was, I turned... that was a webinar style. Like you didn't ever get on the call with anybody. So I, I did get on the call. It was ad, uh, opt-in page, VSL, schedule a call with me. Cool. And at the end of the day, it was just too complicated to get on so many calls. Like it was just distracting me. And then I just turned it off and I haven't looked at it since. So you can mark that right as one of those failures, but I only tried once. I'm sure and I'm positive if, if I go back, I build another funnel, maybe adjust the price, sell it for 297 automated webinar. It could probably work. It might not work on the first one, but that's what people don't get is they try something it doesn't work. They lose a little bit of money. They turn it off and they set it. They they forget it. Right. That is a true failure because you're not revisiting. I'm sure if and when I revisit this, if I really focus and test different things, I'm sure I can get it to work. It might be a few more dollars and a few more tries, but as long as I try again and and at least put effort into it to try and figure something out, I'm sure eventually it'll be successful. So you have to test multiple things. You can't just try something once it not work. And then move on like that. That is a actual failure, I, I would say. Yeah. And well, I think the real failure is never trying at all. That's what my shirt says. You just got to be dumb enough to try, right? Yeah. Like, I why like is that. it important to why is it important to just try? So the reason you need to try is if you don't try at all, nothing will ever change. So a lot of people complain about the situation they're in, right? But if they don't try something yeah. new there's not going to be a new outcome. So for example, I from time to time get into some ruts where I'm doing the same thing over and over and I feel like I'm making no progress in my business or on social media or whatever it is. And I look back and I'm like, I've been doing the same shit for a month, waking up every day, looking at emails, just doing the busy work. But I'm like, hey, I haven't tried creating something new that can push the ball forward. And as soon as I recognize that, I'll usually like, take half of a morning off, I'll take just literally pen and paper and just write some ideas of what, I, why I'm in this rut, what can I try different or try something completely new to push the ball forward. So for example, I work from home, and it's kind of getting annoying. So I literally just went to go look at a few office spaces, because I'm like, maybe if I get out of my house, I get into a new environment where there's less distractions, I'll be more productive, I can create more content. So that's something that I'm going to try right? I'll sign a month-to-month a -month lease or a three-month lease just to try it. And who knows, it can get me much more productive. I might make 15 YouTube videos in a month. I just don't know until I try. Or it could be the same thing. I go to the office. It's the same thing as working here. But at least I'm trying something different. Yeah. You just got to try. You just got to... I yeah. love that. Um, and uh, tell us a little bit about... So you've been doing Instagram businesses since you were, what, you said 14? Uh, yeah. Yeah that first so iPhone. some sort of like business online yeah and those and and so that's like how old are you now 25 25 so that's just over 10 years and tell us what some of the tips and tricks you've learned on how to build organically your following on social media yeah so back in the day instagram was as easy as following and unfollowing people you get followers you can't do that anymore. I had a another business. It was called Plasti Dip Master. So you, have you heard of Plasti Dip where you can yeah. paint? Yeah. So I used to Plasti Dip people's wheels and emblems and stuff. So I started an Instagram page where literally I had a bot that would just like, comment, follow and unfollow. And I got like 50,000 followers on that page like eight years ago, right? I ended up selling that page for like 500 bucks. Um, but that doesn't work anymore, right? It doesn't work anymore. You have to be kind of authentic. You have to, if someone's starting some sort of brand or business, I'm a true believer, you have to be the face. There's ways around that. Like if you want to build community, 
or build some sort of trust with an audience, like you have to put yourself out there. And a lot of people are scared to get in front of the camera. But like, for example, the the day my business changed, the fishing uh, line business change was the one time I decided to make an ad of myself talking about the fishing line. And it was super really? awkward. Yeah, that that one ad, it was literally me on my couch. I put on like a fishing hat and I had the, the spool of fishing line. And I just talked about the features of the line. And it was the most awkward video. I had like one and a half second long transitions, blurs, and it was just a really bad video. But that video still converted super well wow. for Facebook ads. Situations different today, right? You got it, there's a whole recipe to what kind of videos you need to have and how quick they need to be, et cetera. Like it was just that one step of, hey, I'm gonna put myself in front of the camera and see what happens. And ever since then, like my my whole I don't want to say circled or I'm the main character in every single video. Where we're scaling that now is we're hiring other creators to make content for us because there's only so much I can do, right? But you got to put yourself in front of the camera to build community so people can associate the brand or the business with an actual person and it builds trust. Yeah. Yeah. No, someone once told me, you know, humans connect to humans, humans don't connect to businesses. There's no emotion behind it. Exactly. And someone once told me that's why Tesla absolutely crushes is because there's a human behind it. Yeah. An active character. And that's rare for a business. Yeah. That I mean, Jeff Bezos has it with Amazon as well, but um not a lot of companies have that so yeah i i completely agree and you so when we were talking you told me some of the tips and tricks you use to get engagement and i don't know if this is like trademarked or um in the process of being trademarked but you said sometimes on a reel you'll purposefully um put something that's wrong and you know yeah. people will catch on to it tell us about that yeah so the most of the social media algorithms work off of engagement, watch time, um, et cetera, et cetera. So what is engagement, right? If someone likes or comments on a post or if they share it with a friend. So for example, there's times I've on purpose made a mistake in the video, like a species of fish calling it another species of fish. That's very obvious. And then in, you post a video and then in the comments, everyone's like, hey, that's wrong. Or like, look at this dumbass. This is wrong, blah, blah, blah. And even though they're commenting bad things, it's still getting feedback um, and comments and engagement, which for them doesn't know if it's good comments or bad comments, but it's still just going to push that video out more and more. And like I showed you that one video, we got the 9 million views because I purposefully named the species of the fish incorrectly. And I would say 9 million views to my business page, whether good or bad views, is still driving some sort of positive impact. We got a shitload of followers from it. I'm sure one of those followers had to have bought in the fishing line. So you know what I mean? Like sometimes uh, you, you can't be on social media. Everyone thinks you have to be. But 99% of the time is you're thinking consistently. You don't know which uh, post is going to blow up. But as long as you're consistent with what you're doing, and you learn these tricks as you go, the more you post, the more of a chance like that is going to happen where you're going to get a viral video. Dang, 9 million. That would that would cost a lot of money to get that many impressions. So yeah. And yeah. just just as simple as, hey, check out this fish. And, and yeah, that's crazy. What other, um, I don't want to go too, too much into the tactics and stuff. I like to keep it more high level. But do you have any other tips and tricks that you found super useful for growing your um, social media? Um. I mean, so I'm still a work in progress for my personal brand. Like I've had some videos on my personal brand go viral on TikTok. Like I got one uh, video that had close to 10 million views. Um, it's more just keeping the videos is for like TikTok reels and YouTube shorts, keeping them concise. I'd say like 15 to 20 seconds. Um, keep it visible. Uh, and it, it, education is harder. People like entertainment on social media so if you're making stuff in the entertainment niche um you'll have a better chance of going more viral if you're just teaching like hey here's how to set up your webcam or here's some tips to talk on a webcam those are harder to get more viral but where the bridge meets is if you can make them kind of funny make them entertainment and um provide value and some sort of education edutainment is what they call it that's where i see the most successful people going is because 
the videos are fun to watch. They're, they're entertaining, but you're also learning something. It's not just like someone eating a hundred cheeseburgers in like 60 minutes. Like, okay, that's funny, but like, or cool, but you're not getting anything out of that. The, the real successful YouTubers and content creators in like the business space, that's what they're doing. They're mixing entertainment with education. That's what makes them successful. It's hard to do. Like I, I try to do it every day, but it's hard when you get in front of the camera, you're like, you just want to start, at least me, I start wanting to just preach and sell and sell and sell because I'm used to just filming ads. So it's, it's, you really got to take time and plan that stuff out so you can execute it properly. Well, and that's funny that you say that. That's kind of a good segue into uh, you working for Grant Cardone, right? You just want to get mm-hmm. in front of the camera <laughs> and so, um, tell us yeah. about why, why Grant Cardone, why did you want to work there? And, um, yeah, let's start with that. Why did you want to work there? Um, so I grad, I, uh, was a baseball player in college. I had already graduated my senior year and then we had like three weeks left of the season. So you play after our season ended. And then I remember I was just sitting on my couch. I was like, all right, this chapter of my life just ended, which was a huge chapter of baseball, right? Cause I wanted to be a pro baseball player one day. Um, I'm no longer in college. I'm like, what do I do now? I don't think I want to drop ship forever. Cause I was still drop shipping at the time. And on our last trip, I, uh, got Grant Cardone's how to invest in real estate book. I felt I, I got looped into one of the funnels. So I read the book on like the last bus trip. It was a super easy read. I was hooked on the fact that like, wow, real estate is the way to, to really make you uh, really to make true wealth in, in the long term. So I was sitting on the couch and I remember I looked at the book and I was like, I like Googled Grant Cardone and I saw his offices were in Miami in, in Aventura, 20 minutes from where I live. So I was like, hmm, let's see job openings. And there's four job openings, sales, customer service, investor relations, and something else. And I was like, all right, I'll apply. What's like, what's the worst that can happen? So it said, make a 30 second video yourself, submit a resume, blah, blah, blah. So I, long story short, I bullshitted my way in there because I had no experience for the investor relations position. I didn't know anything about real estate. I didn't know anything about sales, but I just had confidence in myself. Like, like it can't be that hard, whatever it is I can learn. So that's, that's why I didn't, I didn't really know who Grant Cardone was. I didn't follow him on social media. I was just like, I got, had saw this guy's book and I saw some of his videos. I'm like, he looks kind of cool. And I'm like, let me see if I can go learn something and learn something about real estate. That was the main goal is like position was for real estate. And I wanted to learn about real estate. I, I actually, that same day that I was sitting on the couch, I bought a realtor's license course. I did it for like an hour and I was like, I never opened it again because I, I got the job like the next two days. So that's crazy. And so you're going, you're working for Grant Cardone. Um, what are your, you worked for him for two years. Is that right? Yeah. Two years. So over the course of those two years, what were your top takeaways in general? And then how have you applied those as you've grown your business? Uh, top takeaways definitely are you have to build an audience for your personal brand if you want to be successful in this space what i mean by this space content creation selling courses uh raising money for real estate like life becomes so much easier once you have an audience and a following of people that know who you are and will literally buy anything you put out there that's number one building an audience uh number two sales like there's sales and everything not only if you get good at sales, you'll get better at communicating with just people, learning how to ask questions, um, learning how to listen better. So sales is a, is a huge skill that I learned there. And I would say probably the third thing is real estate is the way to long-term wealth. So the, 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 uh, the wealth formula, right? Get really good at something, whether it's a job, high-paying job or a business, whatever it is, it could be either one. You could be working for someone, but as long as you're making a lot of money, it's okay. Uh, take that money, invest it in real estate. Well, make the money, save the money, invest it in real estate that pays you monthly. And then you just keep doing that over time to the point where that monthly payment you're getting from the real estate is 10, 50, a hundred thousand dollars a month. And then you're going to look up at some point, you're going to have 10 to 20 million parked away in equity. And then you have a hundred thousand dollars of passive income coming in. You're like, I can do whatever I want. So it's, it's just a game get really good at something, make a lot of money and invest in real estate. Yeah. And that, literally that's what Grant Cardona does. He's the yeah. living proof that it yeah. works. Um, I don't 
maybe maybe he could do all that he does without the real estate but i don't know i think the real estate gives him he, dude he we were i was so i invested in cardone capital where i worked so i was i get access to the investor zoom calls that they do and he was basically saying he's like dude like this real estate that i'm sharing with you guys he was being very genuine he's like guys no one's giving you access to get direct equity in these kind of institutional grade assets so these 250 million dollar deals are typically left for goldman sachs jp morgan where he is putting his own money in these deals and they're saying hey invest with me obviously he's making money right for for putting the deals together but he doesn't depend on that income for his livelihood like mm -hmm. He was saying, he's like, guys, I don't need to make, I don't have to let you guys invest with me. I don't need you to make money in this real estate. He goes, if I want to go make 500 grand, a million bucks today, I can just go on my story and say, hit the link, hit the link, go watch this webinar and he'll get whatever. He'll make half a million bucks. He's like, this real estate is for long-term money. I'm just doing you guys a favor. Obviously it's, it's, there's incentive for him, but it's not immediate. It's 10, 20 years down the line where he's going to be 90 years old. And at the end of the day, he's a billionaire already. So it's like real estate is the, the, the financial freedom tool that if people just learn that game, it'll, it'll change their life forever. Well, and I guess two questions. So I don't even know if you necessarily have to learn the game as you just have to learn how to make a lot of money and it's helpful if you know the game, yeah. I think there are benefits, but you could just go invest with someone and, and they can do all the work, but uh, agreed. Uh, um, as far as the institutional deals, I've always found that really interesting because he's right. It, it is very difficult. A lot of funds, they only let you invest if you have a million, 5 million, you know, to, to be able to invest in, in your opinion, you know, being there, why are those institutional deals so much more attractive than maybe a 50 unit or, an, or a 24 unit that maybe cash flows a little bit more? Yeah, they're just safer. At the end of the day, they're just they're just safer. And when you're playing with that large sum of money, you want to be safer. So for example, like one of the properties they purchased was this property in the heart of Fort Lauderdale. It's called 10X Las Olas Walk probably the nice my buddy lives there the nicest apartment building i've ever been to in the best location like it's on las olas boulevard which is like where all the restaurants shops clubs are bars whatever it's the best location that property will never be vacant there's there's no like who's not going to want to ever live there so as long as that property is there for the next 50 100 years that property will always be full and it will always have renters paying the rent. I don't want to say cash flowing because if you overpay for the property, you're not going to have any cash flow. But like that property, I think is cash flowing like 1% right now, which sounds like nothing, but they purchased it for 250 million bucks. That's still two and a half million dollars. So mm -hmm. at that level, you're looking at the percentages. It's just what is the dollar value you're buying? What is the dollar value you get in the cash flow and in the equity payoff at the end? So institutional is just a lot safer. Yes, a 24 unit deal will probably cash flow higher, but generally it's a little bit more risky than say an institutional grade asset, because usually those institutional grade assets are in the best locations. They have the best amenities. They're typically newer. They have their on premises to take care of maintenance, leasing, et cetera, et cetera. But the property runs itself where those smaller deals, you're going to be more involved and there is a little bit more risk. Yeah, no, that makes sense. Um, wrapping it up here, I just have a few a few more questions, and hopefully these will be helpful for the followers. Um, if you were, if someone was like, "Hey, I want to start a business," what advice would you give them on the first things to do? Uh, it just depends on what they truly are interested in. If you have no idea what you're interested in, just find something, a business model on social media, or go to YouTube and type in side hustles, and just pick one. Pick one, try it for one, two, three months, see how it goes. If you don't like it, try something else. So it goes back to if you don't try, you're you're never going to change the situation you're in. It, it, there's a million side hustles out there, right? right? Ryan Pineda did couch flipping for a couple of years, and that started his house flipping business, which started his social media empire of selling courses and making over a million dollars a month. He wouldn't have gotten there had he not tried flipping couches. So you just got to pick one business model that you think you'd be interested in and, uh, in and try it one, two, three months, see if you have some success. If not, if you don't like it, move on to something else. I love that. And how important it is, is it to have a mentor 
when you start your business? So I never did any sort of coaching. I never had any sort of mentors and it takes you so much longer. Like the pro like you have to figure everything out yourself and make the mistakes yourself. Whereas I've seen people go through like a Grant Cardone uh, course that he had and see how much quicker they just get the information they need. Right. So I, again, it's hard to talk from personal experience because I've never had a mentor, but for here, for example, right. That course that my cousin gave me, I would have never learned drop shipping had it not been for that specific course. Right. I could have maybe YouTubed it, but it probably would have taken me a lot longer having something centralized with all the information there and someone teaching you gets you to the point a lot quicker. Nowadays you can learn anything on YouTube, but it's like, Hey, who do you trust? All the information scattered. Whereas if you just invest a thousand, five thousand, ten thousand, two hundred dollars into some sort of program or course, you can get there a lot faster. It's, it's just it's the map. It's the cheat code. Yeah. I mean, someone I can't I think maybe it was Ryan, but like they basically said, you're either going to pay in time or you're going to pay in money. You pick. Yeah, exactly. Yeah. And it'll take it'll take you. out like hundreds of hours if you just try to learn it by yourself because you just again you don't know if it's the right information or not so if you go to a proven source to someone who's done it before you just you just get there a lot quicker you get the information a lot quicker yeah i love that and uh how can people connect with you i know you you mentioned your instagram what's the best way for people to connect with you yeah instagram uh youtube just my first and last name ryan maya um you can dm me email me um I put on there, like if, if people want, I have an e-commerce course, that e-commerce course that I was talking about, if you guys want it, I'm basically giving it out for free. Not I am giving it out for free. So someone's listening, DM me on Instagram and I'll just give me your email and I'll give you the thing for free. It's, it's literally everything I've done to build my business. I put in video form and I think it's like 90 videos. I wow. just hear, yeah, it's, I, I figure like, it's not going to do anything. It's, it's not doing me any good having it just sit there if I'm not selling it right now. So in the future, I probably will sell it. But for now, if you want it, it's free. So it's like, uh, it's the payment you get for investing in yourself by listening to this entire podcast. Yeah, there you go there. And I'm glad we did it at the end too. So if someone stayed all the way to the end, they, they get the reward. That's sick. Cool. Go follow him. Um, beyond braid message your, your beyond braid account or your personal account. No, my personal account, Ryan, my R Y A N M A Y A is the Instagram handle. Awesome. Well, thank you so much for being here. Okay. Last question. Yeah. Um, my favorite question, what does the fight against mediocrity mean to you? Oh, uh, dude, it means a lot because like you just, there's certain people in this world that are okay with just passing by and doing the bare minimum. And that can mean making 150, 200 grand a year. And they just get there and they're like, all right, I'm good. Like my brother, my oldest brother's 40. He's probably going to make 200 grand this year. And he's good. He's, he's been doing it. It's a, it's a sales job. He's, I always try and push him to do more. Like, dude, like maybe start your own bit, but he's, he just wants none of it. So it, a lot of people think mediocrity could be just making 50 grand or whatever, but like there's people making 200 grand a year that gets stuck there. And it's just like, you don't strive for more, right? Life, the, I think the best things in life happen is when you unlock the big, the big goals, right? Because once you financially set yourself, that's when you can actually have impact and help other people. But you can't do that without helping yourself first. Yeah. So you just, you can't be mediocre, dude. You gotta, you gotta go big. I love that. I actually, I really like that, how you phrased it. You know, mediocrity is really settling for less than you're capable of. You exactly. Know? Maybe, maybe for you, a million dollars a year or a month is super easy. And then you just yeah. like coast versus pushing for two or three and being able to make a bigger yeah, impact. Totally. Well. Totally. This has been a really, really awesome podcast. Thank you so much for being on here. Yeah, man. Um, for any of you guys listening, you know, go follow him, hit him up, watch his business blow up. Um, I know he's, you know, putting out a lot of YouTube content. So go check that out as well. Thank you so much, Ryan, for being on the podcast. Yeah, man. Thank you for having me. Hey, I'm a kid and you know I be on the way.